Hide de Pantes. This cartoon is about Jesus calming the sea. Now, I thought I would do something different. I'm going to introduce here a glossary or a lexicon, a dictionary of vocabulary that will be used in the cartoon first, so you can familiarize yourself with that first. And then we'll get into the actual cartoon that is in Greek, and you'll be able to uh, better understand it, including, of course, their subtitles. Okay, so let's stay with some. Let's start with some nouns. So we would say, um, "onoma" would be noun, um, or "to onoma." It's neuter um, would be a grammatical term uh, for a noun. But here we're saying nouns plural, right? So if, if we use a definite article, it'd be "ta onomata." So the first one be, which is neuter, is uh, to kuma. And this is the third declension. Uh, the genitive would be to kumatos, and that means wave, so like a wave of water. Um, if we wanted to say a wave of the sea, we'd say kuma te stalases. Second declension is ho animos, and that means wind. Uh, seismos would be like a shaking. That's where in English we would say seismic tremor, like something related to an earthquake. Uh, we get that from Greek. Uh, so third declension here uh, is feminine, is hey lilops. Uh, genitive would be teis lilapos. And that would be like a fierce storm, a hurricane, um, something really uh, rough like that. Hey pruma, or teis prumes, or prumnes. Uh, I'll say that again. Hey prumna, teis prumnes. Um, that would be uh, first declension, first declension feminine. So to uh, proskephaleon, uh, to proskephaleon would be pillow. That would be um, that would be second declension, um, and then we get into some adjectives. Uh, so adjective singular would be epitheton. Uh, if we want to say plural, we'd say epitheta. So if we use a definite article, would be ta epitheta. That would be the adjectives. And so we've got two here. Megas, and this is the way we say them, um, or we we'll even see them many times in dictionaries or something. So first you would have the, um, the masculine form, and then the feminine form, and then the neuter form. Some adjectives only have two forms. And if you see the types that only have two forms, then that would be that the first form applies to both feminine and mas or masculine and feminine, and then they would have the uh, neuter with it. Um, but but I think most of them would would be uh, the three type forms. So you got masculine gender and then feminine gender and then uh, neuter gender. So we got megas, megale, mega. That means like big or great, large. Okay, so now here we have an example of the type two. So we have oligopistos, which is masculine or feminine. You got to look at the noun that uh, it modifies. So oligopistos or oligopiston. So oligopiston is neuter. So this adjective means someone that trusts only a little bit. So oligos, um, oligos is an adjective that means like a little bit, right? And then of course, uh, pistis would mean uh, faith and then pistos would be somebody that is faithful. You put those together, those two roots together, and you get this word right here. Someone that trusts only a little bit, or someone that has only a little bit of faith. We have an adverb here, parakrema. So that's something that happens like quickly, like immediately, suddenly. Um, and then we get into some verbs. So to say um, a grammatical term we use for verbs um, would be rema, uh, would be singular, remata would be plural. And of course that's neuter, so ta remata, the verbs. Um, First one would be genetai. That's with something becoming something. And sometimes if it's used in the third person in personal way, referring to time, it can be the idea of something coming to pass or something happening. So that comes from the verb that you would see in the lexical form in the dictionary would be genomai. So again, that's genetai. And then erkatai. And the, so genetai, erkatai, and then on and on, um, you know, We'll get to the rest of them. That's how it is in our cartoon. You'll see, right? And then I'm happen to mention the form that it would uh, be in the actual dictionary. So genetai first, and then this next one is erkatai. That means like someone traveling or going. And then the lexical form would be erkomai. So uh, now we have this verb uh, afiusin. That's in the third person plural form. That would be 
they uh, release or they let go. It could even be if it's used in a certain context where somebody's like forgiving someone. So if it was a few sin, like here's our verb, a few sin. So if it was a few sin, uh, that would be um, they, are for, they are releasing the sins or they are forgiving the sins, right? Um, so that would, the verb form that we'd see in the lexicon would be a fiemi, a fiemi. Um, so now we have a verb, uh, uh, epitima, epitima is the way it's going to be in our cartoon. He rebukes, um, but in the um, lexicon it would be, epi, it's an alpha contract. So ep, epiti, epitimao is the way it's written, but we wouldn't pronounce it that way because it's a contract verb. So we'd say, ego epitimo, I rebuke. Maybe epitimo say, I rebuke you, or su epitimas me. So you rebuke me, right? Um, so anyway, the next one would be katheode, sleeping, right? Katheode. So that's he sleeps. Epitima was he rebukes. Uh, Afiusin was they release. Erketai was he goes. Ginetai was he goes. Or Ginetai was um, he becomes or it happens. It comes to pass, could be. Um, and so here we are on Katheode. So the lexical form for Katheodo, that would be the form that would be in the lexicon. And again, that is uh, Katheode is he sleeps. Diegerusin. Uh, Diegerusin. So that's where they're like raising somebody up or waking somebody up. Um, kind of has to do with, yeah, waking someone up. So that's they, right? So di, let's see, di a gay rusin. They are waking somebody up or they're raising somebody up. And then uh, another form in here would be the passive form in the present tense would be di a gay retai. So he is, he is woken up or he has gotten up. Like he was, he was probably sleeping. Autos um, kateode, um, he sleeps. Kainun, autos di a gay retai. So he is sleeping and now, noon, Autos uh, So now he is up and awake and, you know, he's he's up now. <laughs> so he's woken up. So, and then the next one would be Apolumatha. So the lexical form for this, um, it has to do with like destroying or loosening something. Um, it's a me verb, just like we had another me verb, which was Afiemi. Uh, we talked about that one. So, um... So apolumi is in lexical form typically, typically unless it's a deponent verb, typically the active uh, voice of the verb is in lexical, is in the lexicon. So apolumi, that's the active voice. But here we're actually using the passive voice. So that's why it's apolumetha. So that would be like we are being destroyed or we are, um, yeah, we are being destroyed. It's It kind of has an uh, the idea of like loosening in the sense of, I mean, the way I see it is somebody's soul being loose in their body. And in that sense, like, you know, you know that you're going to die, you're going to be destroyed. So, um, epi, let's see, epibale, epibale would be the next verb, epibale, sort of cast upon or throw upon. And the lexical form would be epibalo. And then we have uh, para lambanusin, para lambanusin, uh, they are receiving. So para lambano would be what would be in lexicon, would be in the dictionary. And then we have a couple imperative um, uh, verbs here. Um, siopa, siopa. So if somebody said that to you, siopa, they'd be telling you to be quiet. <laughs> so uh, siopao, it's an alpha contract. We had another alpha contract, which was Epitimao, so this one is siopao, so you wouldn't pronounce it that way because it's contracted. So you would say siopo, um, so that would be, you know, I am being quiet. Um, su siopa, siopas, you are being quiet. Um, and then we have fimotheti, so that's a, a, a basically an aorist command or imperative form, um, just like the sio, siopa was imperative, but it was an aorist tense. Siopa was present tense imperative. So this one, Fimotheti, is aorist um, imperative or aorist um, command form of the verb. So the mood 
imperative is imperative and the tense is aorist. Fimo theti. So if somebody says that to you, it's almost like they're saying siopa, but it's not exactly. It's, it kind of has to do with like muzzling, like maybe you're putting a muzzle around a dog or you're just clamping down their mouth, causing their mouth to be quiet. And that comes from the, um, the verb, uh, which is an omicron a contract verb. So we talked about two alpha contract verbs. Here's the first omicron contract verb. So it's fi, it's uh, fimo'o, right? So fimo'o so should be, uh, if I say fimo, uh, fimo say I muzzle you, or if I make it passive and I say fimumai, fimumai, then um, I am muzzled, right? I got a muzzle around my mouth. I'm muzzled, fimumai, and obviously I couldn't say anything <laughs> if I was muzzled, right? But um, so pawatai is to stop or to pause. So pawatai, that kind of may sound like pause. I think that's where that comes from. And then the active form found in the lexicon would be pao, uh, pao say, like um, I pause you, I cause you to stop, right? I cause you to pause. Um, and then if you, you know, you know, if you do that to me, pawes me. You know, you cause me to pause. You cause me to stop. So then I could use the passive form and say, Pao mai. I'm paused. I'm stopped. I, you know, I have taken a break. I've paused. Pao mai. You know. Um, so the form that is in the cartoon is third person singular is Pao tai. So he's, he stopped. He's paused. And then um, here's a short little phrase using the verb mellow with one lambda. Has to do with somebody caring about something, right? Two lambdas mean something very different. So, me, mele soy, mele soy uh, means, you know, it matters to you or you, you know, basically you care about it, right? It matters to you. So, the, the question, ara mele soy, uh, does it matter to you or, do, you know, do you care kind of thing? And that would be all of our words. Now, let's start. So, how would we say in Greek? Nun, arxomata. In a kenite opsia, ho kurios lege tois matitais. Erkesta is to peran. A few sin hoi matetae ton oclon, kai para lambanusin, ton curion is to ployon, kai ala ploya esten metal tu, kai para crema genetae sesmos megas, kai lilaps a nemo megale, ta de kumata epibale is to ployon, kai nun gemiz de tu hudatos to ployon, kai buthiz de alaho Jesus epite prumne catheo de. Epito pros que faleone que cae dia gerusen hoi matetai auton cae legusen auton. De askele ara mele soi hoti apolumata eu. Melo mena potene. Dia geretai ho Jesus cae epitimato anemo cae lege te thalase. Si opa, fimose ti. O animos pawetai kai genetai galene megale kai lege autois ti deloi este humeis kai oligopistoi este pos uk ekete pisten kai fobun tai fobon mega kai autoi legusen pros aleilus ti sara hutos este oti kai ho animos kai hitelase hupakusen auton.